number 1177 of the Catechism, okay, which is talking about the sacramental economy, or the sacraments, it talks about the prayer of the church, which is the readings and the psalms that we say a morning prayer and an evening prayer. But it also talks about the psalms and the readings in the Eucharist as well, too, where the word of God is present. So we're constantly being addressed by God in and through his word. Sometimes people say that God is very silent. But if you find God is silent, why don't you give him a chance to speak to you? And he speaks to you through his word in scripture. Okay. So sometimes I find, you know, when I'm trying to be silent to God and nothing's happening, I will take up the scripture and read it until something strikes me that God is trying to address me or say to me. And that's why it says in this number 1177, it says that the liturgy of the hours reveal more deeply the meaning of the mystery being celebrated. They assist us in understanding the Psalms and prepare us for silent prayer. The Lexu Divina, where the word of God is so read and meditated that it becomes prayer, is thus rooted in the liturgical celebrations. And what I want to emphasize there is that phrase that the Lexu Divina, where the word of God is so read and meditated that it becomes prayer. See, Lexu Divina is not simply reading scripture. It's reading scripture, meditating on it, so it becomes prayer, a conversation, a dialogue with God. What I find very interesting is <clears throat> when you approach scripture, as I said before, the only way of allowing it to reveal its riches to us is through humility. And St. Augustine discovered that because before his conversion, he was comparing scriptures to Cicero. And he thought the scriptures were very inferior literature to Cicero. But he said it was only when he was converted and when he had to bow his head and enter into the cave of scripture that it began to reveal its riches to him. You have to bow your head before scripture in adoration and in reverence and in humility and bow your head and enter into scripture, then it reveals its riches. That also reminds me of a very funny um, anecdote that John Waters told once about his own conversion. So I'm not saying anything that he didn't say in public in that sense, but it, yeah. it stayed with me and it was very fascinating because it was a bit like St. Augustine. He said that he felt like when he was you know, on, the, on the cusp of converting, he felt that you know, God wanted him to pray but he says in his pride, he could not pray. So therefore he said, he threw a shoe onto the bed. So he went down to get the shoe. And since he was on the ground, he says, well, since I'm on my knees, I might as well pray now. <laughs> in prayer, we don't do the leading. And that's why prayer is difficult for us because you cannot make it happen. See, that's, and like, as you say, we live in a world where we want to see results where we want to be kind of efficient, we want to be driving things, you know, even our food is fast food. In prayer, there can't be fast food prayer. In prayer, we have to be vulnerable. We have to wait, to wait on the Lord, who is waiting on us. And Lexu Divina is one of the ways of helping us how to wait on the Lord. Before I explain to you kind of the format or the method of Lexio Divina, I think it's very important for us to remember that Lexio Divina, as we understand it now, became a method in the 12th century or so in monastic circles. But it was practiced before that, but not as a method. Because what Lexio Divina was, was that the monk would have been so familiar with scripture that he would have taken a phrase from scripture and stayed with that phrase all day. So when they were working, he would be thinking about it, whatever he was doing, he'd keep going back to the phrase all day. And some say they wouldn't move on from it until they received something from God. In relation to Lex Divina, therefore, what's important for us to remember is it's an attitude, not a method. 
It's not a method, it's an attitude. And the attitude is of someone who is seeking the beloved, someone who loves you. And the attitude is to allow yourself to be loved by God, as St. Elizabeth of the Trinity would say. We often think that prayer is something we're doing for God. But the reality of prayer is God wants us to receive his love. But we keep running away. We, want, we're, we don't stop. We don't wait on God to receive his love. We keep running, and it's very difficult to express your love to someone who's running all the time. That's why we need to slow down. We need to be present to God, who is always present to us. If you liked what you just saw and would like to see the full interview, click on the Watch More box above or else click on the link in the description box below. Make sure to also click on the subscribe button above so as to receive more regular content. Thank you.